Sight See the Tarot is a series on my channel through which I take you on a tour of tarot books, spreads, techniques and tips, different decks, and more. In a previous Sight See the Tarot episode, we explored Mary Greer's Prosperity Mandala. Today, we're going to gain another perspective of how to work with mandala designs and the tarot. We are dipping into Rachel Pollack's 78 Degrees of Wisdom, a tarot book that needs no further introduction. Earlier this year in 2019, Wiser Books released a new and revised edition of this 1980 classic. In the section on how to use tarot readings, Pollack offers a tip for what to do after a tarot reading. Create a mandala or a pattern formed from several cards based on a tarot reading you just had. You can do this for yourself, or you can do so for others in the scope of a professional reading session. Include cards that were from the reading itself and add supporting cards you've chosen to augment those cards. This act of deliberately adding cards not in the original reading extends the balance between the conscious and the unconscious, says Pollack. The introduction of new cards to the ones from a reading and integrating them into a mandala affirms or transforms forms the situation at hand. All right, so how does this work exactly? Let's consult Rachel Pollack, though I'll be adding my own little spin when we get to the mandala part. First, run off and do a reading for yourself. Three card reading, 30 card reading, you do you. Go on, any old way you like. What do I care? Just get it done. But don't dismantle the finished spread. Just do the reading, leave the spread of cards out on the table, and return to this video. Now go! So you're back, and you've finished a tarot reading for yourself, yeah? The first step is to determine whether you're happy with the trajectory your life is going in, per the tarot reading. If you're happy with the revelation of what's going on, then your mandala will be about reinforcing your tarot reading to make sure you maintain the momentum to stay the right course. If the tarot reading revealed lots of icky stuff, and there are some big changes you're going to have to make if you want to get the situation on the right track, then you'll want to identify which cards in your spread you you want to change and shift, then the cards you choose for your mandala will be chosen specifically to turn around those negative or unwanted energies. For those of you who want to work with the happy cards from your reading spread, scan your spread of cards and pick out as many cards as you want from the spread that you absolutely want to manifest that represent energies you want abundant in your life. You can set aside the rest of the cards. For those of you with negative outcome cards forecasted in your reading, identify those negative cards and then think about which cards in the tarot deck can defeat that energy. You'll also want to add cards to your mandala, cards that weren't part of of your reading. So from the remaining deck of cards, look for supportive allies, cards that are going to be reliable sidekicks for your main positive cards or the cards that represent outcomes you want to maintain in your reality. Pollock gives you totally free reign to do as you will and arrange the cards in any pattern at all that you like, selecting as many cards as you like, just basically no rules whatsoever. You follow your bliss to craft your tarot mandala. Me, I'm a tarot tiger mom, so I'm about to lay down a shitload of rules. Get pen and paper ready. So here's what I learned from a Sufu, a Buddhist monk, about crafting mandalas. A mandala is basically an energetic seal. It operates the way sigil magic operates, except sigil magic is usually about summoning up external power and directing that power to make something happen. A mandala is different in intention in that the very act, the very process of casting the mandala imbues you with power. It's about reprogramming the energy imprint within, not summoning up some external burst of power. So a mandala is not so much a sigil per se, although you will probably hear me call it a sigil when I'm being really lazy with my vocabulary. It's more like a light switch. You have to engineer the light switch, that's the act of creating the mandala, and then you flip the switch on and boom, lights! The objective or purpose of a mandala is always, always the same thing. Seriously, unity or union of some kind, fusion. While sigil magic is like whatever intention you want to work with, crafting a mandala is only and always about union, bringing energies together to create some sort of harmonious solidarity. Now, the nuance and specificity within that umbrella purpose of union, of course, is going to vary. Bringing this concept back to the tarot, the tarot mandala you're creating has to be about unity or union in some way. The two oracle cards you see on screen are from my Chinese oracle bone divination deck, which is a free download. I'll link it in the description box. You want to think of this as a form of forging, of bringing together, of creating a solution. 
you begin with a cross. There has to be a 2 that equals 4 in some way. That's ultimately going to produce a unit circle. The mandala has to have some form of representation of the binary, the dark and light, yin and yang, active and passive principle, the binary. This is also symbolic of bringing together the physical temporal world and the spiritual world. Typically, a mandala is going to have four gates, so some aspect of it has to symbolize these four gates. Alternative, six. So the exception to the four gate rule is six gates. That's why in our previous prosperity mandala, we worked with six points. Three or eight is also okay, but it's actually still in the same thing, the same theory because three is the same as six and eight is the same as four. Your tarot mandala has to in some way represent the binary that activates the harmonizing energies of unity and union. So the mandala itself acts as a light switch that turns on and activates the united powers of your assembled tarot keys. Let's say this is the reading result for someone who is single and looking for love. There are some difficulties and challenges hinted at here in the spread, but ultimately things look good, yeah? But this querent really wants to make sure that true love happens, so perhaps cast a mandala to help that querent focus his energies and ensure that the dashing knight of wands shows up in his life. Some of the other positive reinforcing cards here might be the four of wands and the six of wands. So these are the three cards we're going to keep from the tarot reading and use in our mandala. Now, our focus is on the Knight of Wands because our querent wants to meet this Knight of Wands, like definitely this needs to happen. Here were the other two cards from the tarot reading. We're going to add some cards now to the mandala for the querent to really solidify and unify all of these extenuating energies, bring them together into harmony, and make sure the querent is going to just be this shining beacon radiating with all the attractiveness needed to bring in the Knight of Wands into his life. And there you have it, our final tarot mandala crafted for our querent after the tarot reading about love and relationships. Now let's say this is the tarot reading on what's been blocking you from finishing that book you've been working on. Your reading result reveals a lot of obstacles and challenges, so we decide to create a mandala to help clear that blockage and amplify your powers and your capabilities. So we're going to want to carefully select a card, a new card, to defeat, clear away, or positively modify all of the existing five cards from your reading. So in effect, this mandala of five new cards will clear the energy blocks revealed by the reading. Here's our framework for the mandala. This is going to help us unify all the energies of our selected tarot cards to formulate the solution. Put knowledge and our spirit guide leading the way at the center. The hermit will lead us to the sun, our success and glory. Here's our pen or sword, basically our instrument and weapon of choice. Endow us with greater fortitude and beneath us, moving us, drive us forward. And there you have it, a tarot mandala based on the reading you did about the progress of your book writing, which will help you finally complete that project and get it to the finish line. Now it's your turn. In your tarot journal, design the pattern, shape, and arrangement of your mandala based on the basic parameters I just gave you. Once you've designed your mandala and defined how many cards you want in it, add new cards to the ones from your reading accordingly. Then you can either leave the mandala of cards out for yourself for as long as you like to meditate on for any set period of time, the way we did for the prosperity mandala. Or if you're doing this for a client reading because you're a professional tarot reader, then augment it with a crystal grid, bring in color symbolism if you like, and then take a photograph of the tarot mandala. Send the high resolution photograph of the tarot mandala to the querent or client and instruct him or her to take time out each day for a prescribed set of time and meditate on the mandala to help amplify the personal empowerment. Perhaps after the tarot reading, you create a mandala with oracle cards. Tarot mandalas or oracle card mandalas can get as complicated and as ritualistic as you like. 
The easiest way to remember mandala architecture is to work within the numerology of four or eight. Here you see the eight petaled flower and four wheels of eight floral arrangements within the four gates. Then in the outer ring, you will count 32 petals, a multiple of both four and eight, colored by the binary. Again, bringing in that concept of the binary and duality, the fusion of the temporal and spiritual. If you want to get complicated and, you know, use up as many cards in the tarot deck as you can, arrange multiple rings of cards, for example an inner ring of eight cards and then around it a second ring of 16 cards and then around that a third ring of 24 cards and framing your three rings of cards for directional guardian cards. Maybe even mix and match tarot and oracle decks. Working with the magic square and mandala art is another form of craft you often see. This is often linked to the more esoteric practices, though, usually astral travel, shamanic journey, between worlds, that kind of thing. Here, a nine-card tarot mandala that might be used to help you forge and activate your inner powers for shamanic journey is presented on the screen. And then maybe, let's say, with this tarot mandala, you want to augment it with four protection seals placed along the four directions to serve as talisman. Just meditate on that for an hour each day while reciting activation mantras for seven days straight maybe and see how much capability gets activated within you for connecting to the other side. Oh, and you totally don't have to go crazy with the mandala. It can literally be just one oracle card, which you fortify with different crystals or a crystal grid. That totally works to help bring out the cohesion after a tarot reading. Here's another example of a tarot and oracle deck combination mandala that you can easily take a photograph of and deliver to a client after the tarot reading. Try out the tarot mandala technique for yourself after your next tarot reading. You can apply what you learned through the process prosperity mandala episode and work with your mandala for one week and do daily journaling as you write down your impressions or intuitive downloads. To the professional tarot readers, crafting a tarot mandala for your client as part of a booked reading session can take a client reading to a whole new level. It can be exactly the game-changing spiritual prescription your client needed. Rachel Pollack is tarot royalty, and 78 Degrees of Wisdom is the trailblazing text that ordained her as such. Pollack has no doubt been immortalized as a demigoddess of esoteric studies, essential reading for the beginner, and a classic that tarot masters will return to time and time again. This is the book to have in your library. I make it a point to sit down and reread 78 Degrees cover to cover at least once every five years, and that makes a cardinal difference in my personal development. All my reverence and admiration to the inimitable Rachel Pollack.